Welcome everyone. Today I'm bringing to you uh, John Whitehead, who's the head of Metrics, which is a data and analytics company. And we're going to talk today all things analytics. Uh, it's a really critical part of the digital marketing landscape and everyone seems to screw it up. So what I'm going to do is hand you over. <laughs> it's the truth. So I'm going to hand you over to John. John, I'd like you to introduce yourself and just tell us a little bit about what you do. Uh, good morning, Ed. Uh, my name's John Whitehead. Uh, from Metrics. Thank you for the introduction. Um, yeah, Metrics uh, helps businesses set up their analytics, understand them, and take action from what it's telling them. So uh, we generally uh, have a meeting with the client and see, get to understand their business, and then look at how that will influence the best way to set their analytics up then set their analytics up for them. Uh, this includes all the code, all of the interface within Google Analytics, Adobe Analytics, etc. Um, and then advise them on what they should be looking at, um, which are the best metrics to use for their particular business. And also do that on an ongoing basis so that, uh, you know, you, rather than just monthly reporting on your high level metrics, you're looking more at particular parts of your business each month. So it might be that you're looking at mobile or you're looking at different devices, how they're using uh, your website, um, particular campaigns that you've got, got going on or uh, new things that you want to do on the website, understand yep. where they're dropping off, where they're coming into the site, etc. You're getting ahead of me. I was about to ask you the next question, what the tangible benefits are of analytics. Now, I mean, everyone always answers, yeah, you can tell where people are coming from and what they did. But I'd like, mm. you, I'd like you to talk about, if you can, really specifically, like what are the really, really tangible benefits? Like what, what are the things that are beyond just traffic and, hey, what they did, what is it that analytics can bring to, you know, any business? So it's really about understanding where, like you say, you know, it's, it's pretty easy to see where they come from. But um, in terms of for your business, if you have a measurement plan about what you want to achieve uh, for your business, then, then you can look in your analytics and that will show you exactly the behavior of people, um, what they're doing there. We might have to start this one again. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> Sorry, mate. It's all right. So just pause and then just, yeah. just speak in. I can always snip it in or you know what I mean? Yeah, no, what? Okay. <laughs> it's all right. <laughs> yeah. So the tangible benefits of analytics are that um, – it's, it's a bit of a cliche, but, you know, you can't understand what you don't measure. Um, I don't think you originally said that. But uh, once you've got it all set up properly, you get a much clearer idea of how uh, the users are interacting with your website, your app, your digital platforms that you have out there. Uh, because generally, you can throw all this up. Uh, let's say you've got a website, you've got a Facebook page, you might even have an app. Um, it's about understanding interactions before those and analytics is the best way to uh, get an understanding of what's happening yeah. um, so that then you can look at certain areas, see if there's particular problems, um, areas for improvement. So what, what can they do like with insight into all of this? What is the typical action that someone can take? Right? What are, what are the, the business decisions or the spend decisions that they can take from their, their analytics? Well, one of the biggest ones is that um, in a lot of cases, they're not actually measuring uh, what their users are doing. You know, what's the end thing? So if you have an e-commerce site, it may be that you've chucked Google Analytics on there, but it won't tell you out of the box um, – how people are converting, you know, yeah. how many of those are actually making a purchase or yeah. what they are purchasing. So um, what you can do is go in and set things up that are goals. Yep. And these are basically the conversion points on your website. And once you have those in there, then you can actually match up where they're coming from, what they're doing on the site to the actual outcome from your site. Um, and you have your macro goals, which are really 
what the business wants people to do on the site. So it might be buying something, it might be filling in lead forms, etc. But then you have all the micro goals, which are around, are they clicking onto your, are they just leaving the site or are they clicking onto your other social platforms? Yeah. Yeah. Are they using the videos that you've got on the site? Are they engaging with your content, et cetera, et cetera? Can I ask, out of, out of the box, those things that you talked about, tracking downloads, tracking um, clicks, things like that, out of the box, is analytics configured to do that well? Or is there some extra steps that they need to do to make sure that they can you know, track campaigns and I'm you know I'm talking specifically about UTM because when I mention UTM tracking to people for the first time their eyes glaze over right <laughs> so can you explain what that is to people because yeah. I, don't, I don't think they so, realize um, where the holes are and UTMs to me is a way that they can fill those gaps yeah absolutely absolutely so uh, what you're talking about there is understanding um, you have various campaigns running for your business and so these might be Facebook, uh, AdWords, yeah, an email list for mm -hmm. example. And so within Google Analytics you get a vague idea of where people are coming from. So it will show you that they come from search or they come from uh, certain social platforms, uh, other websites and also if they just come directly to the site. But uh, the issue is that it's not very specific, that information. Yep. So you can't see if if you just put a Facebook post up, you can't see if they've come exactly from that Facebook post. Right. So what you need to do is make all the links that uh, you create back to your site to have this thing called UTM tagging on. And all that is, is you're basically letting Google Analytics know that they've come from uh, a social platform, that it's Facebook, and you can also add in information to say which actual post it is. Yep. So that then when you go into your analytics, you can see that you've had traffic from that particular post through your website, and hopefully to the goal that you've got attached to that as well. Yep. So it gives me the ability to see specifically which pieces of content I may have published out there that link back to my site, which emails, uh, which ads are actually driving the visits and ultimately the, the, the sales or conversion items, correct? Yes, that's correct. Yeah, yeah. So then you can, over time, you can look at your various channels and see which are having the most effect, uh, are, of, are the most effective for your business and which ones you can put more into which ones you know you can test turning ones off and turning ones on yeah. um, and different methods on all those channels so it's about understanding which of those whatever campaigns you're doing which is the most effective in driving traffic and also getting the conversions as well so so what here's a question for you obviously why do people why do so many people get analytics wrong uh, because uh, you can put Google Analytics on your site um, for free and you start to see these reports fill up uh, pretty quickly once you get traffic to your site. So it seems like you've got some great information there. You can see the amount of uh, users that are coming to your site, mm -hmm. uh, how many sessions they're doing, uh, that, that is how many times they're coming back to your site. Uh, the amount of page views, etc., all of which looks good. There you go. Okay, that's really interesting, you know. <laughs> but that's the thing. A lot of it is kind of top level and interesting, but you can't really take too much action on there. Yeah. Now, because Google Analytics is available for any kind of website, Google don't have a crystal ball to say, uh, oh, this is for an e-commerce site, this is for a lead site, this is for a publisher site, etc. So you have to go in and actually uh, set things up within there to make it more applicable to your situation. Yep. And so this is where it goes wrong, really, because people think that, oh, well, I'm getting information in here, um, so I'll just use this. But it's very high level. Mm -hmm. you know, it doesn't really sort of give you the information that you need to make decisions on that data. Uh, and so what you're talking about there around UTM tagging, that's one thing you can set up so that you understand your campaigns better, what are driving traffic. Yep. 
Uh, another one is for, for goals. So these are conversion points on your site. Because again, Google can't possibly know your particular situation because it's on millions and millions of sites. Um, and another one would be events. So yes. these are particular actions that people can take on your site, like you mentioned around downloading. Um, you can look at which links people click to go off your site of a, you know, your social platforms, etc. Um, so these three things are really important to set up because they give you a much clearer understanding of your particular situation. So to be clear, once you've installed analytics, at the, at the minimum you should do is you should set up a goal, at least yeah. one goal. Uh, yeah. You should make sure any external links coming to your site, whether from ads or content that you publish out there, should be UTM tagged so you can track yes. which ones are doing well. And yeah. event tracking, yeah? Yes. And that yeah, tells yeah. you the action. So event there. tracking is around. So there, there are three different parts, really, because... The UTM tagging is for acquisition, that is people coming to your site. Mm -hmm. Events are around behaviors on your site. So they're um, actions that people are taking on the site uh, within pages. So it can be clicking buttons, clicking anything really yeah. on the site. Uh, and then goals are conversions. Uh, and all three of those are reflected in the Google Analytics reports. You have sections called acquisition, where people are coming from, uh, behavior, which is what people are doing on the website, mm -hmm. and uh, goals are within the conversion section. Right. So when should someone, tell me about the point past which someone needs to bring in an expert about this, because I, I'm, I'm a numpty and I can set up Google <laughs> Analytics and configure basic goals. But yeah. you know, a lot of business people are, uh, have broad responsibilities and they think to themselves, well, I don't want to have to learn to be an analytics specialist, I could probably do the basics. At what point do you think it's really critical um, for them to say, you know what, I need to bring in an expert? You know, someone like yourself who can make sure that it's, it's, it's optimal, set up correctly out of the, out of the gate. Yeah, well, when you've, uh, especially when you start doing campaigns, so if you're doing more and more campaigns, like you're confident now that you've got your website set up and, you know, there is some traffic coming there and that you know, you've got campaigns going out there, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. I think that is the point where you should get someone to at least have a quick look at it to make sure that you've got those three things that I mentioned all set up. Because otherwise, you're kind of shooting in the dark. You've got campaigns set up, but you're not really sure how effective they are. Yep. Uh, the different platforms will have their own analytics within them as well. So sometimes there's configuration there as well. So, um, you know, I think at that point where you start to look at having paid traffic and driving traffic to your site, you should certainly get someone in to have a look then to make sure your setup is correct. Speaking of paid traffic, are there any issues with the different platforms, say, for example, Facebook, and you know Google Ads, for example, that um, that cause issues where they might lose data with visitors, things like that. I mean, that that, that people should be aware of, right? Yeah. So a classic one is uh, Facebook traffic compared to Google Analytics traffic. Yeah. So uh, Facebook may well uh, over-report, and there's been quite a few news items about this recently about um, their video metrics. Um, their click-through rates, etc. Facebook tend to over-report um, their clicks versus what you'll see in Google Analytics coming from Facebook. Um, because especially if you've got the Facebook pixel on your site and conversion tracking, they'll say that pretty much everything is from Facebook, even if you've been to something in between, like they might have signed up to an email and come from an email. Yep. Google Analytics will say they've come from the email. Whereas Facebook will say, well, they definitely originated from Facebook. So right. you start to see these differences in numbers in there. Yeah. Um, so it's important to look at the overall trends. So if your clicks from Facebook are matching up to the pattern from Google Analytics, then it's okay, even if there's a, a difference between the numbers there. Yeah. John, can you tell me what you see in terms of what people always seem to get wrong? When, when they think about analytics, when they install it, when they read the data, what do they always get wrong? What are the mistakes they always make? Um, there's a lot of confusion around um, the terminology. 
Um, so it used to be that you had uh, visits and visitors, mm-hmm. uh, unique visitors, which yep. confused the hell out of people. Uh, they changed that uh, a while ago to be users and sessions, which kind of makes more sense. So if we just give you a quick example, say that um, someone goes to your website. If I go onto the site and um, the first time I go on, it will give one cap user and their first session. But if I go back to the site again within the day, within the month, etc., that um, adds to their session count, but it doesn't add to the user count because they're seen as that one user. Uh, and also you have page views uh, in there as well, but they're pretty much self-explanatory. You know, you see page views there. But quite often people get um, confused between what's a user and what's a session. So, but the session is time-based. That's each time you go back to the website yeah. or on another session, basically. And the user is a, a, a an attempt to count you yourself, basically, based on IP address and yeah. uh, keys, etc. Uh, the other one is goals. Countless times going to someone's account and they've got no goals set up. Or they're tracking uh, visits to their contact page as a goal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or, or even the homepage, <laughs> which is the worst one you can possibly do. So yeah. basically say, oh, I've got someone on my site. I'll have that as a goal, <laughs> yep. which is totally wrong. It's uh, a complete waste it's of It's got to be a, a specific action that they're taking. So in your example of the contact form, in your first instance, you might have a contact form on there, and when they click to submit, that would be your goal. Yep. Um, and as you get more sophisticated, you may be, might be able to measure clicks on, say, there's a phone number and email address on there as well. If you get them set up as events, you can track those as, click, as goals as well. Actually, that's a good question. Does the type of goal you choose to track differ depending on the type of business you run? Uh, Not necessarily on the business, but um, on the actions that they take on the site. So a goal can be, uh, there's four types of goals. Uh, One is based on the page that they get to. Mm -hmm. So if you imagine if you're selling something, the, the last page, your confirmation of purchase, that would be your goal. Yep. So you'd take the page of that and put it into Google Analytics as your goal. Um, it may be that you've got a site where the URL doesn't change when you submit a form, for example. Mm-hmm. So say you've got it in that contact form example, the page just stays as saying it's a contact page. Yes. When you click the button, you can have an event on there and you can track that as a goal. So then you've got, so that means you've got a page goal and an event goal. But there's also two other engagement goals that are the amount of pages that they looked on the site and also um, the amount of time that they spent on the site. Um, I don't use them as much as the other two. I tend to have them in a different, what's known as a view, because they can blow out your figures quite substantially once yep. you set those up. Uh, but yeah, those two first ones, the, the page they get to and the event, those are what you usually use for your goal setup. Yep. So, uh, In terms of the other one would be, if you've got an e-commerce business, there's actually a whole um, e-commerce module that you can plug in. Uh, and this gives you much more data on um, the sales and right. things like that around that. Actually, I do. I always see a lot of confusion when it comes to things like e-commerce tracking and, and even simply events. Because when when people who are new to analytics go to the you know the Google website and they're installing it, uh, mm. you know, analytics will tell them you need to add this extra code to your website to track events or things above and beyond mm. just adding the code. So yeah. I mean, how does the average person even understand how to do that? I mean, shouldn't this automatic just be automatic out of the box, or do they actually need to go and edit their HTML code and tag things to get events working? Yeah, and um, that's one of the issues that, you know, you, you, you have your own website and you start to um, 
look at these things and you, you go, oh, right, I need to put Google Analytics on here. So you go off to Google and you get this piece of code and you put it on the site. Uh, and once it's on there, you realize that you probably need some more code to be able to see, for example, events. And then you sign up to Facebook and have a Facebook page and they say, oh, well, you should put the Facebook pixel on your website. Yeah. So you get some code for that and you put it on the website. Um, you know, whether that's through a plugin or you do it yourself or you have a developer to do that. Um, then you might sign up to something like Hotjar because you want to look at heat maps on your page or record what's happening, which is more code to go so, on the site. I mean, how do I, how do I deal with this complexity? I mean, I've got all these codes from different yep. websites. My developer's charging me by the hour. Yep. I mean, and then someone's going to come in and delete code so the data's not complete. How do I... How, do, how does the average punter deal with all of these issues? I mean, what's out there? Uh, so the answers are tag management tools. Um, and so there's several of these. That there's paid solutions, but uh, Google have come up with their own solution, uh, which is a thing, thing called Google Tag Manager. Right. You're going to have so, to give us a very simple explanation of what a tag manager is. Yeah, so the, the, the issue that I've just mentioned where you've got all these different codes from these marketing platforms, that's what Google Tag Manager is designed to uh, manage. Right. So uh, rather than um, go to your developer or doing it yourself, et cetera, um, there's one piece of code to put on the website, mm -hmm. Google Tag Manager, and then all those other uh, pieces of code that I've mentioned, which are called tags, um, you can manage through Google Analytics. Because uh, one issue is also that, like I mentioned with Facebook, for example, you can have the Facebook pixel right across the site, but there's also things called events within Facebook, uh, which is different from the Google Analytics ones, but uh, it's the same terminology. But they're more about those dis discrete actions. So if you've made a purchase on the site, you can let Facebook know that you've made um, a purchase. But the problem is you have to get that this little piece of code and put it on the purchase page. Right. Um, so Google Tag Manager helps with this because it says, oh, you can put it this particular action right across the site, or you can have it only fire off on the purchase page. You can configure this all in the back of Tag Manager. Yeah, and you can do this all with it. So uh, Google Tag Manager, you just access it through your browser, and you can do it all within um, Tag Manager, basically. So you can say, oh, on the purchase page, fire off my event for uh, Facebook. Yep. So they know that I've converted on the website, basically. So, so for the so if you missed that, so what John's talking about is you put a, one single piece of code on from Google Tag Manager. You log into the Google Tag Manager interface, and it yep. allows you to add all of the additional bits of code uh, to provide additional tracking on your mm -hmm. service that came from different platforms, whether it was Facebook Pixel, whether it was e-commerce tracking, or Hotjar, which is a, a visitor action tracking software. That's correct, yeah. right? Yeah, that's totally right. Yeah, 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 right. yeah. And so, and it's got, you know, millions of options in there. But there's actually a lot of templates in there now for um, companies that basically sign up to their, uh, to be able to have their tags within templates. So some of them are actually incredibly easy, like Hotjar, for example, uh, that gives you code to put on your site. But if you use Google Tag Manager, you just go in and choose this template and it gives you an ID, you drop in the ID number and then tell it to trigger on all pages and that's it. So, you know, it's yeah. too much job really. I mean, I've, I've uh, got to admit, conceptually, that sounds awesome, but in yeah. but practically, I, I find the the Google Tag Magic can be really confusing for a lot of people. The, the terminology they use, um, it, it sometimes doesn't gel and I find a lot of business people struggle with conceptually thinking about, okay, I understand what you're saying, but the actual implementation is problematic. Um, do, do you think that Tag Manager is something that a business should um, should learn to do themselves, or do you think it's it's the kind of thing uh, that you should bring in an expert, someone like yourself in, to implement? Uh, I think at this stage, you should certainly um, 
check in to get someone in to uh, set it up initially and then give you some training on how it works. Because like you say, conceptually, it can be a bit confusing sometimes yeah. in terms of, hang on, what do I have to put here to get this to fire off on this? You know, yeah. uh, and the things that's problem, yeah, people come across because they're going, oh, this all looks good, but I'm a bit confused. They've made the interface a lot better. It used to be really confusing. You'd come in and just be like, I don't know what to do. Like it's really hard to um, uh, Google Analytics. Uh, sorry, Google have their own course on how to do it. That's actually a free course within Google Ac Academy, uh, but obviously it's fairly generic. Yeah. So in order to get it uh, set up for your own site, it's usually better at this stage to get someone in, um, or at least do some training in it to understand which of the different part components of Google Tag Manager to use for your particular situation. So is I guess the question is a lot of people are running this, the standard default installation of analytics, you know, started with classic, then it went to universal and that confused the heck out of, out of a lot of people. And now you're talking tag manager. Right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. And this is where I think a lot of the problem comes from, right? Google is wanting to deal with people with technical skills and the business person just sees this stuff fly past. Someone mentions that they should implement it. So if I've got a big business, I've got a history of analytics there. I mean, how do I, how do I, is it easy to transition and upgrade an existing analytics implementation and put Tag Manager in if I want to access all these benefits? Is, is that an easy task at this stage? Generally, it's pretty straightforward. Um, it's just being organized to switch from one to the other, really, because you'll have, say, you've got a Google, ta Google Analytics code on there. Yep. It's really just a case of setting up the tag within Google Tag Manager and then just swapping over the two codes. Um, Google Tag Manager has advantages in that um, you can also preview. Uh, you know, uh, with Google Analytics, the problem was you chuck the start, you chuck the code on, and then have to wait a bit to look in your reports to make sure it was working. Yeah. Whereas with uh, Google Tag Manager, you've a preview option, so you can go through and make, test everything out before you even put it live. Um, and even if you do put it live and it doesn't work, you can just roll it back as well. So there's a lot more um, control yourself over it rather yes. than having to go to a developer each time and say, oh, sorry, it didn't quite work. Let's try this, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. Look, my, my personal opinion is if you are any sort of real business, you've got a lot of data and understanding and measuring and tracking that data and those marketing activities is important to you, then yeah. my personal opinion is you, you get an expert, someone like you in. I always abdicate the responsibility for that because the reality is there's so much complexity. Uh, I, I don't go to YouTube and watch my neurosurgeon do brain surgery and then try to do it on myself. So. <laughs> Um, that's the analogy that I would use. So, I mean, yeah. I, I think it's critical for I mean, yeah. anyone listening to this. It, you know, it's important to get the right people in, make sure it's set up correctly, and then mm. leverage your knowledge and insight to interpret the data, I suppose. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's exactly right. Because, um, you know, we can come in and understand your business and also suggest things that you might want to add in there as well. Yeah. Um, so you might start to do it and go, right, I'll put Google Analytics in and I'll put this in, but um, I'm not really sure how to track clicks on my phone numbers, for example. Yes. You know? uh, whereas we can come in and just do a setup straight out of the box and you'll have all that information being tracked straight away. Um, so do you, think, do you think a business should have someone like you in their sphere that they can bring in on a project-by-project -project basis or on an ongoing op, you know, basis to help them just keep an eye on things, make sure the, the, the tracking yeah, is correct, totally. to give yeah, them yeah. new ideas yeah. about what they can track and improve, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, we certainly do a setup and then take them through it so they can take it as far as you want. You know, if you want, if you want to do it yourself, then we'll show you how to do that. Uh, but also we can help support you over time to be able to uh, do it properly. Yeah. <laughs> Tell me, what are the? I know when they updated analytics to Universal, they talked about all these really cool non-digital things that you could track via analytics. Mm. Tell, tell me a couple yeah. of those. I don't completely understand how that works. So basically what we've done is uh, there's some code that you can add to any internet-connected device 
that will show that uh, someone's used it and that data will run into Google Analytics. So for in theory, you should be able to connect up to FPOS machines, etc. Uh, and if you go and look uh, in YouTube, there's examples of people having like coffee machines showing how often people buy coffees and stuff like that in the office. Does that not pollute your analytics data? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, <laughs> seems crazy. Uh, but it's really just, you know, if you imagine if you've got a bricks and mortar store and a website, then it is possible to track from your FPOS, um, you know, purchases within the site. Or you might offer, um, say, it's a Zoom, for example, yes. uh, and people can buy their tickets online. You can go along and say it's got a, um, a QR code on there that they can scan. And then they can uh, match that purchase back up to the website, mm -hmm. uh, and that they turned up to the park. You know, just because just because someone's bought a ticket online doesn't mean they've actually been to the park. You know, but you can actually match that user information up to there, and then you can see if they're a regular user over time, so that you could send them offers, for example, saying, "Oh, you, we know you've been to the park like three times, so maybe we can offer you." Uh, a good deal. Uh, I'd suggest there's probably more important things to fix before you get to that point, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. That's pretty advanced uh, usage of it. But um, yeah, it's really about uh, pulling in extra data that you can use to match up because not everything's your website. You know, there's a lot of other things going on in your business. Um, so, but that can be like, you can make it like a central hub of your knowledge. So, so why is Google giving away this product for free? <laughs> to get you to use AdWords. <laughs> right. So they've got a vested interest, correct? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Like it's pretty easy to uh, um, link up AdWords. And also um, there's a premium version of it as well. So if you have, if you're a massive organization and have a lot of data, um, then there's a paid version as well, which gets goes through one of the um, Google partners. Yes. But it also has some direct support from Google as well. Yeah. I should be clear, Google Analytics is not the only game in town, correct? Exactly, yeah. There's a lot of paid products as well. So what would be three others uh, that, that businesses would, would consider? And I guess what size of business would you have to be to look at some of these products? Uh, it, they, they're generally for more enterprises, but you know anyone can use them. But you'd look at the pricing and decide on the basis of that. So Adobe Analytics, uh, Web Trends, etc. And they've all, there was a big, uh, towards the end of the uh, 2000s, there was a, um, for example, IBM, IBM bought up two of the uh, major ones that are existing at that time, Unica and uh, NetInsights was one of them. And Adobe bought up um, Omniture. Um, so these bigger companies bought up these um, digital analytics tools, basically. Uh, in order to get in there because, you know, it's it's full circle. You know, if you, your analytics is measuring all of your other um, online activities. So there's obviously uh, linkages between all of those things. So the company that has those products available, they can always get you to use their other products that all complement those. Absolutely. You know? Yeah. I mean, are there other, other things that we should be... Um, you know, we're talking data and analytics here. With mm. regard to our businesses, are there other things that aren't covered by Google Analytics that well, that we should be tracking? And I'm conscious that you know there's a trend towards mobile devices, uh, mm. apps. I mean, uh, there, we're not just sticking on Google here, right? There's there's a ton of different analytics applications that, that are oh, important. Oh, absolutely, for businesses, yeah. Because yeah? once you get into the area of business intelligence. Uh, then there's you know a whole raft of all products that uh, you can use for your business because you can have HR data, uh, your product data. There's so much more data in the business that isn't just your online stuff. You know the, yeah. the Google Analytics will track your marketing um, and you know now with this. Um, protocol that you can send other data and you can do that as well but then you can match that up with crm data uh customer relationship manager yep. um and, and all of these there's loads of dashboarding applications so you can pull all this data into one big dashboard 
Uh, so so when you, yeah, huge variety, huge variety. So you just said it. All this data, huge variety. This, and this is a problem I see a lot. Like analytics gives you so much information. How do you how do you make sure as a, as a business owner, as a marketing manager, how do you make sure that you're not just adding data because mm. it's cool to have more data? How, how, do, yeah, yeah. Yeah. how do you make sure that so all you need, is, is... You need a measurement plan. Right. So uh, you, you know what your business does. Yep. You need to get the feedback on the most important factors of those. So whether it's sales, whether it's getting leads, whether it's, you know, and then... So start with the plan. Right? Well, and, you know, do you need more staff? So you need to look at your profit and your profit margins. Um, and there's you know, a myriad of different tools for these as well. But it's really having broken down what are the goals for your business. Yeah, and that's, so that's, that's apply right. Apply to all those different things within your business. So your website, for example, that's what I'm talking about, those goals on there, they should align with what your overall business goals are. Right, and yeah. I think that's... If, if, for example, you go through a growth period for your business, you want to grow the business and get more staff, and you're going to be looking more at your HR, yep. uh, what your margins are to be able to take on more work uh, and grow your business internally. Uh, having more stuff on. Yeah. So, uh, sorry, what were you yeah, going to say? Um, what was I going to say? There's, yeah, it just was a myriad of tools to help you with that. So all of that, you can buy more and more things to be able to show you all of this data, but you just need to be stay focused on what it is that matters to your particular situation Absolutely. and not get distracted by all the bells and whistles and That's things. Because right, that, is, that is a blight that afflicts us all so <laughs> look at looking into the future it's uh early 2017 what are mm. what what are the the big issues in the world of analytics and data that people should be aware of that is coming down the pipeline that that, that they may not even be aware of now that you think is going to have the biggest impact on our society on business on how they work i mean is there anything that's that's coming down the pipeline that people are just not aware of um you know? uh, I don't know. I think people will be aware, but um, I think there's going to be a huge change within, say, for example, analytics, uh, machine learning, so that um, there'll be a lot more, um, and prediction as well is more likely to go from individuals to being a whole machine learning driven enterprise. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you, you may have heard of predictive analytics. So you look at your data over time and start to try and make predictions on those. But uh, more than likely, that's going to become more uh, automated and use AIs and uh, machine learning in order to drive that. Yeah. Because they can look, you know, it's much quicker for um, that data to be processed and an answer come out at the end than it is for a human to have a look at that. Yeah. So I would suggest that makes it more critical for you to understand, to have a good fundamental well, understanding. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Because it can make those predictions, but if the data coming in is wrong, then obviously it could make the wrong, wrong prediction on that. Um, and it's really about knowing the strategy and looking at that and understanding what the implications of that are for your business. Because... Depending on your own personality, you may some of these, see some of these as an opportunity or not. You know, you might go, oh, no, no this is going to be terrible. But mm. then think about other opportunities that might be there within that. Yeah. Yeah. Mate, that's, so, you know, that's going to be a massive impact on analytics, really, that there's be much more machine learning involved in it. So do you think that'll trickle down to small business? Like, you know, the GA, Actually, you're saying that... Yeah. Yeah, yeah, so it's actually already available within Google Analytics. There's a, a, an app version of Google Analytics, yep. and that's got like a, a prediction part in it. Not a prediction part, a, um, uh, like a monitoring part in there. And you'll notice in um, Google Analytics just this week, just yesterday, there was a change in the interface. Yes. So um, everything's been moved over to the left-hand side in the menu. But the intelligence uh, parts of that have all gone, and they're coming back, and they're going to be using similar to what's in the uh, mobile app at the moment. Yeah. So that so it says, oh, you've had this much increase in your traffic from Facebook, for example. So it actually listed all out in there. Yeah. 
um, and you'll see a lot more of that. So that's the, the start, really, of this machine learning um, being available within these tools. Okay. Mate, that's, that's pretty comprehensive. I think you've given a, us a good rundown on the criticality of analytics and the importance to people. If you were yep. to give away three things that they should do after this podcast, three action steps, three, three tips, what, what would they be? Um, start using Google Tag Manager. Uh, to get all your tags in there, <laughs> yep. uh, set up goals within Google Analytics and also use uh, UTM tagging. And I can send you a guide on UTM tagging. Um, okay, you've got a guide. We can, we can, we can um, link to that. Yeah, the video. yeah, 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 yeah. Awesome. Because uh, it sounds harder than it actually is. Once you get your head around it, it's sort of like, oh, okay, all you're doing is basically telling analytics where the link is coming from. Yep. Just adding a bit of extra information to the link that you put up. Okay. Um, so it's all about having better control over the links that you put out there, basically. Um, John, where can people go to find you and more information about you? Um, metrics.org, All right. uh, which is in need of a massive uh, update. <laughs> I'm sure it's got a good installation of uh, analytics on it, though. LinkedIn and Twitter. Yeah. Um, I think they're both Johnny Whitehead. Uh, but I'll post up the details. I'll send you through the details. Absolutely. And, and the final question of today, I really want to know, when Razorback is going to be having a comeback tour. <laughs> <laughs> I see the drums, uh, I see the drums behind you. So, if everyone yeah. doesn't know, John is a former <laughs> member of a thrash metal band called Razorbacks. <laughs> <laughs> yes, back in the 80s. And yes, it was named after the Australian film as well. Uh, That's classic. I, was, uh, I lived in deepest Lancashire then, back in the UK. But uh, me and my mate saw the saw Razorback one night, one late night. Yep. Kind of a horror film thing, and um, which is obviously an Australian film, you know. Um, and uh, yeah, so that's what we call the band. And uh, we basically. I'm I'm Slayer. tempted to post the picture of the band that you've put on Facebook <laughs> with the with all the hair. It's because You're we're all back in those days. such a serious analytics person. It's an interesting path that you've taken from music to this space. <laughs> well, I'm still doing the drums, as you might be able to see in the background there. Um, yeah, yeah. But I, I don't know. We're kind of uh, all over the world. I know um, three of them are still in the UK, but I'm over here in Australia, and uh, one of the guitarists is in Canada. So. Yes. <laughs> sure about that one <laughs> that's awesome look um if, if like john said if anyone wants to find out more about john or needs john's help metrics.org um i hope you've enjoyed today's video and you got some value from it if you've got any questions just leave it below this video wherever you see this video and we'll see you in the next one thank you john no worries thank you ed and we're done <laughs> that was Yay. good that was good now <laughs> let me just let me just press stop